I'm often asked, what are the most common mistakes made at year end? Well, in this video, we're going to dive into the top five errors nonprofit leaders make when the year's winding down, and I'll walk you through the best solutions for each. Some of these mistakes may seem minor, but they can really torpedo your entire year end efforts if left unaddressed. Stay tuned to see if you're making any of these mistakes and how to avoid them. Mistake number one, not preparing enough in advance for a year-end campaign. Nonprofits often don't start their year-end campaigns until November or even mid-December. But here's the thing, by that time, many of your partners have already allocated their funds elsewhere. Research shows that donors start making their year-end giving decisions in September. So the nonprofits that begin planning their campaigns by September or October have a significant advantage. In fact, I've even received two year-end gifts in September already this year. The solution, start planning year-end campaign early. Ideally, you should be strategizing by September, setting clear goals, identifying targeted donors, and preparing materials. Even a simple plan mapped out early can make a huge difference. Mistake number two, sending a generic year-end letter or not sending one at all. Next up, let's talk about the year-end letter. I just did a video about how to do an effective letter, so check that out. Now, I know some of you might be leaning on email or even skipping the letter altogether, but studies show that baby boomers, who are still the largest donor demographic, respond best to a physical letter. In fact, there's a lot of evidence that shows that Gen Z is starting to respond to that. It's a powerful tool, but unfortunately, too many organizations send a generic version with dear friend or something similarly impersonal. The solution, craft a personalized letter. If you have a small team, focus on personalizing for your top 20% as these individuals typically contribute 80% of the funds. Address them by name, acknowledging their previous gifts and offer giving ranges that are relevant to them. And don't forget to follow up. After sending a letter, a follow-up call or visit can boost response rates from 2 to 3% to as high as 50%. You don't want to lose out on this engagement opportunity. Mistake number three, not calling or visiting donors after sending a letter. Failing to follow up after sending a letter is one of the biggest mistakes that can be made. Think about it. If a letter can get you a 2 to 3% response rate on its own, adding a phone call can multiply that by 10. And yet, many organizations don't take the next step because it feels intimidating or because they don't know what to say. The solution? Make those follow-up calls a priority. Find staff or board members who are comfortable making calls and set a simple, clear script for them. If you need help building confidence, I've got a whole video on making great year-end calls, so check it out if you're feeling hesitant. It's all about persistence and reaching out to keep that connection strong. Training your team on how to ask effectively is one of the best investments that you can make. Remember, most donors are happy to support, but they appreciate a little nudge. Mistake number four, asking for money just to get out of the red. Donors don't want to give to bail you out of debt. Asking for gifts simply to get out of the red sends a signal that your organization is in trouble or at least has some caution flags. For many donors, this makes your organization feel risky. 
They don't want to invest in a sinking ship. They want to fund growth, innovation, and impact. The solution? Frame your appeal around forward-looking initiatives. Even if you're in a financial bind, highlight how donations will go towards making a difference in the lives of those you serve rather than plugging budget holes. Engage your board or key supporters in making a difference in what you're doing and give them excitement for the future. Remember, people give to the future, not the past. Make sure your appeal aligns with your mission and vision and paints a picture of what's ahead rather than what's behind. Mistake number five, not being specific in your appeal. Some nonprofits fall into the trap of th- saying things like, give whatever you feel led to give. While it sounds open and generous, it doesn't give donors a concrete target. When people don't know what's expected, they often give less or sometimes nothing at all. The solution? Be specific. Offer clear options and suggest amounts and connect each dollar figure to an impact. For example, if a $100 gift funds school supplies for one child, say that. If $500 provides meals for a month, be clear about it. This approach makes it easier for both logical and emotional givers in a household to get on board with a meaningful gift. When you outline clear goals, people understand their impact and you're far more likely to secure the kind of gift that you need to hit your goals. It's all about creating a tangible connection between the partner and the impact their gift will make. These are the top five most common mistakes nonprofits make at year end. I hope you found these insights helpful. By addressing these areas, you can avoid those common pitfalls and strengthen your year end results. Remember, even small adjustments can make a big difference. If you like this video, let me know by giving it a thumbs up and leave a comment below if there were things that you especially liked or if there's some common mistakes that you found as well too. And let this community of life changers know that you're part of making a difference in our world. If you wish to watch future videos on this channel, hit the subscribe button and click the bell to be notified immediately of the release of the next video. If you wish to follow me on X, go to at Jim W. Dempsey, on Instagram, also at Jim W. Dempsey, or if you have any questions, go to fundraisingmasterminds.net forward slash Jim and Java. And if you wish to be part of a community of like-minded leaders, join our Life Changers group on Facebook. As always, I wish you the best as you strive to become fully funded at year end.